I will, but I can't. <laughs> Good morning, Mondavi Center fans. It's Mike Tennis with the Mondavi Center marketing team. We are here in Jackson uh -huh. Hall on stage. Today we are presenting performing artist Vladimir Feltzman, who will be performing tonight at 8 p.m. along with Dr. Don Roth, executive director of the Mondavi Center. Today we're going to continue our ongoing series of interviews with artists and uh, Don's gonna do our interview today. So Don, take it away. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit, you come from a musical family, obviously you come from Russia, uh, and, uh, and, and in fact your father had a very interesting musical career in He was in a Russia. famous uh, composer of popular songs, uh, movies, operettas, uh, musicals, and so on. It's like Russian urban Berlin, I would say. <laughs> very, very big. And, uh, but you didn't go in the direction of, of quote-unquote popular music. No, if I did, I would be much more wealthy. But, <laughs> so, no, <laughs> it, it was I stick with Bach and Beethoven. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, tell us a little bit about your training in, in Russia, and then, of course, what age were you at when you left Russia? It was uh, 1987. I was 35 years old. 35. Uh, I was born in 1952. It's 35. So my training was, I mean, absolutely the best uh, there is, there was uh, in Russia, because no matter whatever problems with Soviet Union and the ideology and politics I had, the musical training and education was phenomenal. So I had great teachers, and I am always grateful for that part of my life. So, yeah. Earlier this year, uh, we we had uh, uh, the Marinsky Orchestra here oh, with, Valeria. With, with, with Valerie Gergiev, and I heard you mention at an earlier uh, meeting today that you have something in common with him. We met in a class of Ilya Musin, who was the greatest uh, conducting guru in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, at that time it was Leningrad. So I was 21 and Valery was 20. He's still one year younger than me, so <laughs> it, 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 it didn't change. <laughs> he hasn't caught uh, up. So since that time we became friends, so we know each other more than 40 years. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but we are good friends and I am very glad that he had such great career and did uh, and accomplished so so many things. So well, when you uh, came here, one of the first things that happened to you was the opportunity to play uh, at the White House. Uh, you yes, know, a and and, and uh, that kind of gave you a, a, a really unusual, but a, a, a kind of a kick, what we'd say a kickstart to your career yes, in the US. Yes, it was, it, was, it was fun, and I do remember it fondly. It was a bit bizarre experience, quite uh, unreal. And when you start, yes, it was great, but when you start to play in White House and you are on Good Morning America and on 60 Minutes, where do you go? I mean, <laughs> there is no nowhere to go, so you have to go down a bit, which, uh, which happened. And But I am, uh, you know, jumping 30 years uh, already from that time, because it's already 31 years ago. I'm glad that hype uh, is no more, that I found myself, I think, a nice niche, and I'm happy uh, with what I do, who, who I am, and where I am, so. Well, why don't you tell us uh, a bit, you, you know, you are at the beginning of a three-year project here, the Mandavi Center, you'll be coming yes, here. Yes, we, yes, we talked about it. Yeah. And, and you uh, are doing programs where you're looking at connections between uh, different composers. So uh, this evening, uh, you know, having heard, having had the opportunity to hear you play works by all of these the composers this evening, I know we're in for something very special. But tell us just a little bit about uh, this program and what people can expect uh, to be here. Well, the program is Bach, Beethoven, and Chopin, who, who, I think both Beethoven and Chopin has been greatly influenced by Bach, actually, and understood him very profoundly, very closely, and very uniquely personal. <laughs> uh, because what Beethoven took from Bach was quite different uh, that to what uh, Chopin took from it. Uh, Beethoven also was a major influence for Chopin, alongside with Mozart and some other composers. So there are, in music, in art in general, there are influences and connections, and to me as a musician it's a fascinating uh, process to 
see that and to connect the dots and to put together a program which makes sense mm -hmm. to me, hopefully to people who will come uh, here to, uh, tonight. Talking about uh, future, I think we will do next year, uh, it could be Schubert Schumann or Schubert Liszt. Yeah, and I think we are even we talking about Brahms and Schumann too. Brahms and Schumann, yeah, Brahms yeah. and Schumann. Actually, you do remember better, yeah. Because <laughs> Brahms, uh, obviously Schumann was like godfather to young Brahms and uh, Clara was his dear friend for the rest of his life major influence Schumann and Brahms life, so it will be Schumann Brahms, and then possibly Schubert Liszt. Mm, wonderful. Schubert wow. influence Liszt wow. and uh, all, of, all, all of that. So it's basically uh, mostly German music besides Chopin, which is uh, even hard to put label on him. I mean, Polish, French, uh, I, I don't know what yeah. Chopin it's was. Music. It's, it's music, yeah, it was Chopin. So it's interesting uh, uh, project, and I'm grateful to you that you uh -huh. uh, you took it. <laughs> well, no, we know we're happy for you. You know, you, yeah. you, know, you were saying uh, this morning uh, when you were speaking to some of the students at UC Davis yeah. that uh, uh, music begins where words leave off, and I think that that is where the words cannot reach. Where, where the words cannot, cannot reach. reach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a w it's it's an absolutely. Wonderful saying, maybe, but I'm going to ask you just a few more words about sure. the music tonight. When you play the Chopin ballades, uh, you play them as, as one. Yes, non-stop with no applause in, yeah. in between, as a cycle. Yeah. And, and why did you just, why did you choose to do that? Uh, I mean, that's not, normally they're played because separately. to me, well, normally they play separately, and I understand why, because it's very, very difficult to pull off all four together. Mm -hmm. They're very personal, uh, uh, emotional uh, roller coaster. And uh, for me to play four, I don't do it too often, because it's really difficult, exhausting. Not technically, but just emotionally to get there. And you cannot uh, just do it on your mind, on your intellect. When you play Chopin and romantic m music in general, you really have to kind of get into the thick of it. Mm -hmm. So to me, it is a cycle. It's a narrative. It's four stories uh, which are different but very personal. All Chopin music is very personal. Uh, it's very sophisticated stuff. To me, Chopin was one of the most subtle, uh, aristocratic, and uh, ambivalent composers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always not what it looks. It's always something different, some ambiguity, uh, and uh, possibility of multiple reading and interpretation, which is a big challenge, but also kind of very precious experience for anyone who touches his well, music. I, I think tonight's going to be a precious experience for those people who come uh, and we, we really are looking forward to these three evenings it, over the course of three, three years and I think having heard you as I said earlier play Bach and Beethoven and Chopin I think you're among uh, the, the most interesting exciting and deep interpreters of those works, so we are in for a Very kind a treat. of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mondavi Center fans. We have a few tickets available tonight for the concert at 8 p.m. You can find them at mondaviarts.org.